I'm Amanda Midke for The Alchemist Kitchen. I'm an herbalist and plant witch, and this is my farm, Locust Light Farm. Today we've come to the garden to make an energy clearing stick, which can be burned to clear unhelpful energies from a space, or from you. People all over the world have long burned herbs to change the vibration of a space or a person, which might mean setting a mood, changing a tone, preparing for a ritual or ceremony, or to give a clearing after something difficult has occurred. You might be familiar with the term smudging or smudge stick, but I like to use the terms energy clearing or smoke clearing because the word smudging refers to specific practices done by specific native peoples of North America. When you're choosing herbs for your energy clearing stick, it's important to choose herbs that are not endangered or at risk in wild populations such as white sage or palo santo. If you do choose to burn herbs that are at risk, it's very important that either you or the business you're buying the herbs from have a direct relationship with the person who harvested the herbs. This is really the only way to ensure that the herbs were actually harvested in a sustainable and respectful manner. Fortunately for us, there are many herbs that grow abundantly in the wild or in gardens like mugwort, rosemary, garden sage, lavender, and so many more. All of these herbs have different skills and nuances and they can all be burned to make sacred fragrant smoke. Today I'm going to make a bundle with sweet annie, rosemary, mugwort, and lavender, all from the Lotus Light Garden. Let's begin. First you're going to line the herbs up on the table. It's important that you line them up from the top down because you probably want the top to be the part that looks pretty. It's like a bouquet, you put your foundational herbs in the center and then the prettier herbs on the outside. And you want to line it up to make sure that there's the same herbs are consistently throughout the length of the bundle. You can make the bundle as thick or thin as you like but just remember that it does need to dry. So you don't wanna make it too thick. The next thing to do is to cut a length of twine. I like to use this soft, unbleached cotton twine that I get at the hardware store. Give yourself a little extra so you don't know how much you're going to need. And then you want to tie the bottom of the bundle. Very carefully. And knot it off. And then you're gonna wrap the twine upwards around the bundle, holding everything in place as you do so. As you're wrapping the bundle, that's a very good time to perhaps recite a prayer, a mantra, or an affirmation. And as you wrap, you can tie, you can tie the twine as close together as you want, or if you like, even farther apart. It's totally up to you, it is your bundle. You do want to make sure to tie the twine tight around the herbs, because the herbs are going to shrink as they dry, so you want the twine to stay loose. You're gonna to wanna to leave some area at the top open because it looks pretty. So you get to decide how much you want to tie off at the top. And once it's at a place that you like and you like the way it looks at the top, just begin wrapping it back down, crossing over. And again, you can use your twine to bring in stray leaves if you want, so you could wrap this one up. Or you can let more leaves free and loose if you like the look of that. When you get to the bottom, you're gonna tie it off again. Again, knotting it pretty tightly. Then you can cut the excess twine and cut the excess stems. Ta-da! Look at this beautiful bundle you've just made. Now that you have your bundle, you need to dry it. 
You can dry it in a few different ways. My favorite way is to tie more twine around and hang it upside down to dry because when you hang it upside down, this nice floof at the top will stay in its nice floof shape. You can also lay it flat or you can put it inside a brown paper bag, leave the bag open and let the air circulate and dry it. The bundle needs to be thoroughly dry before you burn it. When it comes time to burn your bundle, this loose part at the top is going to flame out and burn very quickly. So expect that to disappear. When you're burning a clearing stick, you want to get a nice smolder in the center, and that will only happen when it's thicker, um, where it's tied. So this top fluff will burn out very quickly, and then where it's thick, you'll get the nice smolder that you want. So let's light a bundle from the Alchemist Kitchen. These are all herbs um, that were harvested in New Mexico by um, indigenous members of the Taos Pueblo community. I like to use matches when igniting any sort of herbs for sacred smoke. So depending on how thick the bundle is, it might take, like we're getting a nice flame right away, but you might need to expose. You might need to expose the plants to, to flame for longer, which is why sometimes it can actually be nice to light a candle first and then light your clearing stick from a candle. So I'm gonna light one more match here. And again, I want to get the center of the stick lit to get that to get that nice smolder. So you, you can let the flame go. If something really starts to flame, you can blow the flame out and see how we're starting to get that nice smolder in the center. So often people will use something to move the air in front of a clearing stick to help encourage oxygen flow. Some people like to use feathers. I actually like to use other bundles of herbs. So you can keep the air flowing which will keep the smolder going, and also you can use it to direct the smoke where you would like it. So if you're using the bundle to clear yourself, you can direct it up over yourself. You can direct it into a space if that's what you're doing. A bundle like this will burn for hours and hours and hours. So the intention is not to burn the whole bundle at once. The intention is to let smoke as you need it, and then when you're finished, you can stub it out um, and just make sure that it, you know, it's done burning. Um, and then just set it aside, keep it stored in the dark, and then you can use it again. If you'd like to learn more about working with herbs magically and medicinally, or you would like to find some ethically sourced products, you can visit thealchemistskitchen.com.